Sidecar racing on the high-speed surface of the Grand Prix circuit is a job for exceptional men. 70 miles of hair-raising work for drivers and passengers alike. But passenger is scarcely the word for the man in the chair at these events. My name is Stan Dibbon. I'm 86 years of age, coming up 87 actually. I was a world champion sidecar racer in 1953. At the end of the war, I was told to make my mind up, what do you want to be? Do you want to be a wireman or an insulation inspector? Or what do you want to be? And I said, no, to hell with it. I want to ride motorbikes. The freedom of riding around on a motorbike was just fantastic. Sidecar racing in particular is addictive. Joyous lunacy, if you like. If you look up the word passenger in a dictionary, it bears no resemblance to what I used to do on a sidecar. One had to move around with very precise timing. If you got the timing wrong, of course, you're liable to go into orbit, which wasn't a thing to do. We were just in time for a spectacular error of judgment. Here it comes. I was never frightened of speed. Courage, it never came into the picture, really. It was something that we just did. The fear factor never comes into it. Uh, actually, 1953 was quite something. There was a lot of rivalry with BMW. They were just coming to the fore. We needed to win the last race of the year. This was a Grand Prix, this was a big one. The big league of motorcycling is played on the shimmering road of the Grand Prix circuit. Here, the great crowds, the color, the excitement. Here, if you like, is the glamour of the game, with British riders and British machines defying the concentrated challenge of the world. I knew exactly what I had to do. I anticipated what was liable to happen. I never made any mistakes. Noel, with the BMW, tried all he knew for the honour of the fatherland. But Britain's aces worked like Trojans to keep the flying three-wheelers on the road. That struggle hit the crowd holding its breath. We had a German very close on our tail, and I just rubbed my shoulder on the road and showered him with stones. He very quickly disappeared from behind. Not the done thing, really, but uh, all part of racing. He held it through the final swinging curves, on the shuddering breaking to La Source, and over the line to victory. Once again, the great crowd had seen a famous British victory. To stand in front of 200,000 people in Germany with our national anthem being played, one could very easily get very emotional about that. You know, we, we hadn't been out of the armed forces very long. I can remember it very well, very well indeed. Eric received his gold medal, and me, as the inverted commas passenger, received a silver one. They even got my name wrong. Well, I was a bit, a bit upset about that, hurt my ego. As far as getting onto a sidecar now at my age, I count birthdays back from 100. I'm 14 this year, I'm 13 next year, and I try to behave that way. We have a world champion in our friends, the passenger of the world sidecar champion from 1953, Stan Dibbon. World sidecar champion. I was never frightened of speed. If you got frightened, you wouldn't do it. swinging curves on the shuddering breaking to La Source and over the line to victory.
During my life, I've been given many offers of, of things to do, places to go, and I have never, ever said no. If someone said to me tomorrow, we've got an expedition to Mount Everest, you want to go, I would say yes. That's been my philosophy. Always, always say yes. And sleep on it.